So in order to understand more about this class and where we're going with it, you really need to understand the basics of material science and engineering and how we think of materials. So what I want you to do right now is to go find something. Find something in your room and go pick it up. We'll give you time. No, something you'd find in a room. There you go. All right. No, no, no. Something unattached. Not your dog. Okay, so. Well, she's found something. Did I got find? something too. Okay. Okay. So the first thing we want you to do is to describe it. So why don't you describe what you found? Um, well, they are sunglasses and they help me to see when it's bright outside. Okay. So that's what it does. What's it look like it's made of? Ah, uh, well, it's very light. Okay. And uh, I can see a little bit through it. Okay. Um, so it's transparent or translucent. Thank you. Um, it looks like uh, if I tried to bend them, that they'd probably snap okay. or break. But they're a little bit flexible. That's true. Okay. That's true. All right. That's interesting. Little. And then you've got, it looks like you, does it all the same plastic? Um, well, there are different components to yeah. it that might be. Right. So it looks like colors. a mixture of materials, like might be using one material for that and another material for that. And there's these hinges too. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. And the hinges probably have, do they have a metal in them? Sometimes they do. They'll have a metal pin in them, right? right? I picked up a pair of scissors and this is also the same thing. It's an engineered system, right? But it's obviously some kind of metal and that metal has then been coated with some kind of plastic, right? To make these scissors. And probably, presumably, this, this steel or whatever it is that this metal is, is something that I have to be able to make sharp so that I can make very sharp scissors. So when, when you look at a material system like this, right, we typically break it down into different materials. So for example, this material system happens to have metals in it, mm -hmm. right? And it also has polymers in it. But you could also have something that would have ceramics in it. For example, the glass lens on her mm -hmm. sunglasses would be a ceramic, right? It could have something like a semiconductor. So if you had your cell phone, for example, it has a semiconductor inside of it. It could even have a composite. You might have, say, this handle is actually fiber reinforced, right? Then it would be a composite. So we all, each, each different material class has different properties. And so a lot of times the way we try to describe a material is by looking at the properties. So if you, if you take the piece of material you have in your hand right now, right? How would you describe it? Does it have, if it's a metal, does it have a high density? Is it heavy or is it light, right? Is it feel like it's thermally conductive? Like if you put it in cold water, you can feel it get cold? Or does it feel like it's insulating thermally? Does it feel like, would you guess it's gonna be able to conduct electricity? So it might be electrically conductive, right? If it's a metal, it typically is, right? Metals are also typically opaque. I can't see through a metal. It would make a very good lens for my sunglasses, right? Um, and metals typically can corrode. So you might be worried much more about the corrosion properties of a metal. If it's a ceramic, might have a very different property, right? Ceramics may have something that's, that's like sort of lightweight, or they could be heavy, like a brick or a glass, right? You got a glass here, this is a ceramic, right? It can be transparent. It can be brittle, right? If I drop this thing, you know it's gonna break, right? Typically, if I thought I was gonna conduct electricity through it, it probably wouldn't conduct very well, right? Um, if I make a coffee cup, you hope it's not thermally conductive, otherwise it burns your hand when you put your coffee in it, right? Um, and probably this thing's not gonna corrode. You don't often see coffee pots that are, are, are corroding or, or coffee mugs, right, that corroded, right? So, so that's an example of ceramics. And then if you're dealing with a polymer, it's a very different class of materials. Typically they're very soft, right? They could be ductile, right? This material could actually bend and break, right? It's ductile. It's probably not gonna conduct electricity very well doesn't conduct heat very well, right? Can be transparent, I can see through it, yeah. And it's probably very corrosion resistant. They're not gonna, your sunglasses are not gonna rust. That's good. So those are all properties of materials. And so typically when we look at material science and materials from a material science perspective, what we're looking at is the properties that are important. If I'm building something, then I need to be able to decide what is really important in that application. If I wanna build a pair of scissors, do I really care if they're transparent? Probably not. What do I care about? I care that they stay sharp. All right, that's important, right? Do I want them to be, you know, electrically conductive? Probably don't care. You know, I'm not gonna be using an electrical application. So as you go through the atomic properties, the thermal properties, the mechanical properties, the optical properties, the chemical properties, the electrical properties, all these properties, you have to decide what's really most important for what you're gonna use it for. And so that's one of the challenges that we have in material science is to identify that property and then say, 
I wonder what influences that property at the atomic scale. You know, what is it, the structure that's driving that, that property? And if I can understand that structure property relationship, mm -hmm. then I can start to really optimize the performance. I can make this material much harder than it was before and that'll make a hold an edge much longer, or I can make it softer. I might not want it to be gooey, but I might want it to be soft and stiff. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can tailor the properties by the way I make it to change the structure. And so that's what you do in material sciences. You try to look at how the property of a material is influenced by how you make it and how that influences its structure. So we call that the structure property processing relationship. So the way we typically represent this in material science is I just talked about how the structure at the top of this pyramid that you're looking at is influenced by the way you process it and how that influences its properties, right? But all of this really is ultimately leading to how it performs and performance is, is, a, is a subjective thing, right? It's, it's a decision that we've made as a society that it's performing well in that application. So we've decided what we want to use it for, and then we decide how it's performing. So material science is in, inherently tied into a social aspect because we want materials and material systems to perform, to do something for us. Right. Now, Kevin has spoken quite a bit about all of the physical properties, the right. observable properties, if you will, the properties that you'd learn about in a science class of materials. <laughs> but we know that there's also other properties of materials that are social and cultural, for example. Um, for, ex for example, let me grab uh, another object because I'm tired of my sunglasses here. Let me grab my cell phone because my cell phone has a semiconductor in it. Now, what might be some of the social properties of a semiconductor? Well. How much does it cost? Mm, yeah. Right? So it has a value, sure. an economic value. Well, I think you could call that a property of it. Where did this semiconductor come from? Uh, is it rare? Right. Is it scarce? Can you, can you find semiconductors easily around the world? Uh, do they require a lot of uh, work to uh, process them so that they can be used properly? Do you have to engage in trade with other countries? Mm -hmm. These are all, I think, some of the social properties of materials. How does the use of this material affect our personal relationships? When I'm engaging with a, a, a semiconductor, am I talking directly to you face to face, or am I talking to my grandmother? Oh, uh, just a second, I got phone? a text. Thank you. That's very rude. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and how do we perceive semiconductors? You know, are they safe, or do we think they might give us brain cancer, for example? Yikes. We certainly, right? They, I hope they prove that wrong. We certainly have perceptions of these materials, and these perceptions are social and cultural. Now, does this material depend on other materials? Is mm, it in ch yeah, a chain sure. of dependencies? Sure. Uh, do you need to make certain things uh, to turn a material into a composite, for example? Well, you need to be able to source those materials as well. Oh, those yeah. are social chains and elements. And, and finally, is this material sustainable? Does mm. it biodegrade? Can it be recycled? Does it require us to maintain it so it doesn't break down over time? Mm. Does it have a short life cycle? Does it benefit the people who make it? Does right. it benefit the users? Sure. So there are all of these social and cultural elements of materials that we also have to consider as part of the, the processing and the larger picture of materials Absolutely. in our lives. Absolutely. So let's take another specific example of how a society and its cultural beliefs might affect how we use materials. Now, Baby bottles are often made of plastic. You can get them made out of glass as well, but the plastic ones are nice because your little tot can grab them easily and hold them on their own so you can sleep a little longer in the morning, hopefully. Now, there was a big scare that there was a certain element in these plastic sure, bottles. Sure, they PPA. added like this bisphenol A, which is right. this chemical that actually made it easier to process it. So everybody thought, oh, this is gonna be great. We're gonna mm -hmm. use this in all our bottles, right? It'll make the, the bottles cheaper and easier to process into the shapes and, and sizes that you want, but it had this, adverse effect. Absolutely. We found that it was potentially linked to cancer in small populations. And so now you see a lot of things that are plastics, especially for small children, that say BPA free. And even with that, a lot of, and I speak here as a new mother, a lot of us are, are parents are, are scared to use plastics. We have a perception sure. that polymers are bad or dangerous materials. Right. You may not have any idea what BPA is, mm. but you're going to buy BPA free bottles nice. simply because it must be healthier for my baby. Exactly, or glass and type. In any case, a society perceptions can influence the materials that we use. So in sum, when you want to talk about the impact of materials on society mm -hmm. and what we'll be doing with all of our colleagues throughout this class together, you have to talk about three different elements. Right, you have the physical material, you have what it is that you're actually physically making, 
Yes. But you also have the society in which you're doing that making and the social institutions like legal systems, economic systems, governments, social classes, etc. Right. And cultural norms, what people actually are willing to accept as a culture that, that, that fits into their description of, of how they want to be as a society. Exactly. Beliefs, religious beliefs, norms, patterns of working, etc. All of those together uh, create the impact of materials on society. Right. And so, in effect, we, we've created a new tetrahedron, right? One where materials is just one of the legs or one of the points on the pyramid, but you now have society and you have history and you have technology. So all of these things can influence the success or failure of a material and, and whether or not society really can benefit from that material. Exactly. So as we go through the course together, we'll look at materials and their enabling properties. We'll look at the societies that those materials are used in, in the present and the future, but also historically, because that has taught us quite a bit about materials. And then finally, we'll talk about the technologies, the artifacts that we build with those materials.